Hey there guys, Ian here, and today I'm bringing you another Cinema 4D tutorial, and this one's actually about an intro I did for Scuff uh, the other day. So, I'll show you the intro um, here. Uh, you can see we have this hexagonal pattern which kind of sweeps over the logo um, at the start. Um, during the sweep here, uh, you can see the pattern going across and also on the S at the end. And this is all done in cinema, there's no textures um, or anything involved. This is all purely um, material based and it's all very dynamic and pretty cool. So we'll jump straight into cinema where I have a very basic scene set up with an object and a few lights in here uh, just to give a nice little surrounding. But this doesn't have a texture on, this is just a default um, object and we're going to have some fun. So the first thing to do is to create a new material and we'll drop this on and straight away Wow, we have a cool looking render. No, um, we want a nice pattern um, which will go across the whole thing. And we want that to be a nice hexagonal pattern like in this. So you can see, uh, very nice and very simple to do. So in the color channel, um, we're going to drop down to um, the surfaces tab and under here we'll have tiles. So you can see now we have a nice tiled object, but this looks a bit crap. So we're going to change the pattern from uh, squares to hexagons. And look, we have a hexagonal pattern. So if I open this window up, um, we can have a closer look at what we're creating. And that's just by right clicking and open window. Um, just saves you having to kind of squint at this when you can see a giant high res image. So what we want is a black and white image where um, the outline is black, which is the grout color, and all the middle is white. So we'll just um, make all the other colors except for the grout white, and look, we have a nice pattern. So the grout width we want to set to about 1, and the bevel width to about 1 as well. Um, we can change these up uh, depending how we want it. Um, this will do for me. Uh, you can uncheck bevel if you want, uh, and just play around with these settings. Obviously this tutorial isn't going to create the perfect texture every time, so it's all about experimentation and having a bit of fun creating kind of interesting different patterns. If it's all the same it'll look a bit rubbish. So now you can see we have a cool hexagonal texture which, wow, it looks exactly like the current uh, intro I made. So. The next thing we want to do is create this nice kind of bump effect. So you can see um, we actually have um, the texture bouncing around and it catches some of the specular highlights um, from this, which currently this does not. And that is done using a bump channel. Pretty easily in the color we can copy the tiles, in the bump we can paste the tiles. And look, it's catching the light. So you've got to be careful um, which way this is actually extruding. And so you can see if I do this, uh, the other way we actually have the uh, kind of grout sticking out. Uh, that's not what we want, so we just want it kind of in a bit. Um, nothing too crazy. Um, we want this to be a kind of subtle, uh, just so it kind of picks up a couple of the highlights like it does nicely over here. But it's not too obvious, so we'll drop this down to about... Um, five percent, and that's looking nice. We're getting subtle. Uh, it's picking up a bit of subtlety, and the hexagon, the hexagons are a little bit big, so we're just going to tile them um, about two by two. Uh, you can change all these values based on the size of your object. But now you can see we have this nice pattern, um, and it all looks uh, rather good. So. What we can do now is just add a bit of reflection, and I'm using R16, so I've actually got the reflectance channel, um, which is pretty cool. Um, I'm still not completely used to it, um, but it, it seems to work pretty well, and I need to just play around with it a bit more. So you can see now we've lost our specular, and so we're just going to add a GGX um, 
reflection and you can see everything's gone a bit crazy. Uh, what we can do with this is actually use a layer mask and drop in our uh, tiles again. And now you can see it only picks up on the outside bits. We can increase the roughness, we can decrease the mix strength and just get something which you're happy with. So now we've got this kind of metal ball. I'm going to drop the reflection strength and um, increase the specular strength. That way we get more kind of highlights picking up and we have a bit less reflection. And I'm using the roughness to kind of spread it out. So if I drop it down, you can see we have this really harsh um, reflection if I increase it up. Render times increase, but we get this really nice kind of diffused look. And I'm happy with something a bit like this. Uh, that will do. Obviously it increases render time a bit, but that's not something we're going to do. So we'll get a Fresnel in as well, and that will just help. So we'll drop the strength down and a bit more. So this is looking nice. Uh, we've got this nice texture going. What we want now is these cool lines that um, travel across it. So this is actually done in a different texture. So we'll grab a new material and to make sure it lines up, I'll duplicate the material on there that's just holding down control and dragging on our new one. So this now has the same values. Obviously in this case it doesn't make too much difference because we know what it is. But when you're kind of offsetting everything to make sure it lines up perfectly, it's just a bit easier. So now that we've got this, uh, we can have some fun by going into our texture, turning on luminance. So we have this completely white object removing color and reflectance and activating alpha and this is where we're going to do everything so we're going to go into our texture paste our tiles in and you can see we have um, all the bits where the grout isn't is illuminated if we click invert now everything where the grout is is illuminated and this is essentially what the effect is you can see it's illuminating only where um, the kind of hexagonal pattern is. So we're halfway there already. What we want to do is actually get a mask to kind of mask off areas of this. And to do that, we're gonna go into texture and go to fusion. And what fusion does is allows you to combine two textures together. And I'm gonna use this blend channel as a mask um, to mask out certain areas of our object. So what we can do is go into gradient and change the blend mode, I believe it could be. This is where I always get confused. Could be that. Um, I won't know until it's done. So we'll just go to the start of the timeline, go into our gradient, and what we want to do is drag this white back. And so we have a very harsh line, and then we can uh, make another um, black dot here and so now we have this very fine line and we're just going to make a keyframe on frame 0 go to say the 30th frame drag this to the end this almost on top of it but not quite um, if you overlap them then the keyframes won't work properly and we'll have that there and hopefully See, we now have a line that sweeps across and about halfway along, we're just going to drag these out and make a new keyframe. So that way we have a slightly thicker line that goes across. And so now you can see everything's working fine. In the editor, we can animate the preview. And so now when we play it, we get a line sweeping across. Very cool. Um, now back in the alpha, uh, we just need to do some um, kind of trickery so we actually want to invert this again I believe um, we'll invert it and then go into our tiles and make this white and the rest black um, and hopefully this will do what we want yeah so now you can see we have um, the line only creates the luminance, it doesn't take it away. And to make it a bit more interesting, we can add a slight bit of turbulence to the line. And that way it's not completely flat. 
And this is essentially the effect. We can make the line a bit thicker if we want and just make a new keyframe. And so now you can see we have the sweeping line and you can see there's multiple ones because it's using every um, edge. Um, if we set both of these to cubic and set it to one, now we have one line going across, maybe two. And this is the effect. So you can see we get these really nice um, sweeping lines, which if you were to go into your multipass and render out material luminance, um, this will only render out, well, it'll render out an object uh, layer. Um, that will only have this luminance texture on. So if you only wanted to add glow to this texture here, uh, you can use your material luminance and they'll render out just these lines here and so you can add a glow effect on top of that. So another way, obviously, you could add glow here, but Cinema's glow is never quite as good and I can't do it because I'm using the progressive so if I just change it to adaptive and low and just do a very quick low res render and in one second you'll see hopefully uh, we'll get some nice glow well I say nice it'll be hideous but there you go you get some glow coming off the texture um, this effect will work for any object I could literally drag in um, a figure drop both of these textures onto here and you can see all works fine and this is all I did for um, my scuff intro. You can see we have the angle here and you get this lovely glowing line which goes across. Spend a bit more time on the lighting on this one. Um, and so you get these nice specular hits and the texture's a bit nicer, but essentially all of the um, basics of what I just told you are in here. And yeah, this is a really cool technique for doing um, all these fun textures. And as soon as you coat it in a load of depth of field uh, using the tutorial I posted the other day, um, you get these beautiful uh, highlights coming across because depth of field and kind of luminance textures just work uh, really well. So you can see we get this beautiful kind of highlights and uh, bokeh effects and it's, it's really nice. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Um, use it for any project you like um, and show me what you can create. Uh, so yeah, this has been Ian, and just have a nice day, everyone.